You know, I think it's easy to create a straw man to attack game theory. Uh, and if you literally think that the payoffs that you've written down are completely right, uh, and that the other player and all the players are identical, uh, you will come up with a really stupid answer uh, that is uh, misleading. Uh, and that, I think, is a, uh, is a poor application of game theory. And that's also why we call the book The Art of Strategy. Uh, there is a science behind it, but sometimes it's used as a dialogue. It's providing a common language so that we understand the reason why we think somebody's going to take this strategy is because they see all of these different options playing out in this way. Do you agree with that? Where is our, our conclusion falls from our assumptions, so now we can understand, do we have a common set of assumptions? But this article pointed out something else that I think is even more important, that there's multiple levels of game theory. And I like to think of uh, us as metagame theorists, uh, or it's not just about solving a particular game, it's about making sure you're playing the right game. <clears throat> and so, uh, now how do you go about designing a game? And you can think about that, you can change the rules of the game, you can change the players in the game, you can change the payoffs in the game, you can link one game to another game. So you need to understand some game theory to figure out when I'm doing my game design, are these changes likely to help me or likely to hurt me? And I think in the end, I'm not going to be so precise to say it's going to be 7.365% improvement, but it's a good idea to link these two negotiations or it isn't a good idea to link these two negotiations. And that's the level at which I think we can be very helpful.